Absolutely. I, I think, the, you know, <laughs> sometimes I almost think it's not fair being a man because it's like <laughs> you, there's so much expectation. And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's just a reality, right? Like there's just a lot of expectation placed on a man, you know, as a husband, as a father, as a, as a minister in the church. You know, there's a lot of things that are on us, right? And I think sometimes it's like we have to deliver primarily because we are responsible for others, right? And that principle applies not only in the context of being a husband, like with a family, but even like at work, right? Like as a leader, like I have people who report to me and they're counting on me to be in the position and to operate in the position so that when they need something, I'm not like, oh, I don't know right? Like, they're looking. So, it's the same way, like, I apply that principle as a man, um, that God has entrusted people to me, or responsibilities to me, um, but the reality is, my responsibility is to ensure that I'm operating, and I'm also doing what I need to do, because there's people counting on me. Welcome everyone, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for my brothers for joining me on stage. Uh, this is definitely something that has been long awaited and we're looking forward to chopping it up. Um, today we are really gonna be discussing what it means to be a godly man. And um, we can imagine, you know, the topic I think is very relevant, knowing everything that we're going through in today's world and so my brothers here, we teach in Sabbath school in a more formal setting, um, but we figured that, you know, sometimes we should take off the tie, take off the jacket, and just really talk as men, and hopefully that this is of benefit. So with that said, um, I'm Pastor Mark, but you can call me Mark, that's cool. And to my right is Alex Blagrove, my fellow teacher, to my left, is Ricardo Rose, my fellow teacher as well. I'll give them a chance to introduce themselves. Yeah, so as you said before, we, the three of us have been working together in the Sabbath schools here at our local church. And uh, I'm just joined, I'm the most recent addition to the, 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 the partnership here. So uh, I'm very much excited about the direction where we're going and uh, like you said before, this is a little bit of a different avenue in terms of how we're going to approach certain topics, especially the topic that we're talking about today. Uh, and we hope that this is a venture that we can continue in a more casual setting, but to talk about things that are actually very serious and just allow us to talk about it more openly, a little more freely. Uh, and hopefully people who are listening, they will get to be a part in listening to real conversations. Yeah. I'm I'm so honored to be here with you guys, and I'm really looking forward to, like you said, Pastor Mark, chopping it up in a more informal setting, you know, and seeing where this goes, of course, right, this being our first podcast, and I really love the topic, because I think it's something that we can all speak to, um, because it's something we're all striving to in our own realities, personal realities, um, but one thing I'm really appreciative for is the opportunity to share God's word um, and try to do so in a very relevant and realistic way without taking away from the text or the meaning of the text. Like, we want to apply what God's word says. And I think that's what we strive to do in Sabbath school. But I think in this forum, um, especially for our audience who are listening in or tuning in, like, we want you to know, like, our heart and our prayer is really to relay God's word in a way where you can learn, be connected, and understand more about God, right? And I think this particular forum is one where even though you're listening to us, it's like, but you can still engage with us by, we want to like provoke your thoughts. We want to provoke your, your way of thinking or maybe even like, even through us talking, like we'll probably see like maybe we can sharpen one another, right? Outside of just a formal lesson. So yeah, so, you know, I'm really excited about this. Yeah. <clears throat> Perfect. No, I'm looking forward to it. So, I mean, the goal of today, the goal of this session is to really prove, you know, as men of God, it's to really prove 
this whole design that God designed specifically for the male, specifically for the, the man, the fathers, the brothers, the uncles, um, is this model that God designed specifically for a man, is it still relevant in a changing world? Is it still relevant? We want to prove that it is relevant, being believers, um, growing up in the church, all our lives. We want to prove that this is actually true. The model that God um, prescribed for man is relevant throughout all times. And while you, not, you, you may be listening and be like, yeah, that's obvious as a Christian, we want to just challenge, what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis? So, I mean, let's start with this question, and I'll get your thoughts on it. What is your definition of a man, and what is your definition of a man of God? Um, sounds pretty straightforward, but we know in today's day and age, uh, the definition of a man seems to be changing. So what is the definition of a man, and then what is the definition of a man of God? Well, uh, Alex is the doctor, so he has to know what a man is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at the, the risk of being overly simplistic, um, I, I think the, the question is twofold, right? Because the question could be simply, a, what is a, a male? Because I think that the question of what a male is and who a man is uh, is very different. Depending on the conversation. It's depending on the conversation. Yeah. So when I think of it, I look through the lens of, well, there's two sexes, right? Yes. Uh, and it's very Only binary. Two sexes, yes. Yeah. Binary. It's, it's, to me, it's binary, and it's, it's genetic, right? You either have an X or an X, or it's an X and a Y, right? You have a, and you know, obviously, it's a little simplistic because it's obviously genetic disorders and stuff like that, right? But if there, are, if there is an Y chromosome in your DNA, you are a male. And if you're absent of a X chromosome, you are, by default, female. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's controversial. I don't, I don't <laughs> like, that's the sermon, right? But no one else is here, so that's it. <laughs> uh, period. Yeah. Now, what is a man is a very different question to me. Yeah. Because you, you, you can have a, a male has it's a broad spectrum, right? And what I mean by that is that when a male is born, they are a baby. They are an infant. Um, but as that male grows, they grow from a stage of uh, infancy to uh, a being a boy or a child uh, to a teenager and to a full-grown, fully physically developed male. But w in our, for our conversation, I think we mean more what is a man made of? Yes. How do we look into the abyss of... Uh, men in the world today and determine whether or not these males or men or are they simply boys who shave? And this is the question that we're <laughs> really like asking, that. right? I like that. Because there's plenty of grown, fully, physically developed males, yeah. right? They've gone through puberty and the various stages of development. But when we're talking about mentally and to a deeper level, emotionally and spiritually, have these males graduated from boyhood to manhood. And so when I think about a, a man, Ricardo, I think about various attributes that should be present, right? Um, the Bible puts it like this, right? It talks about the fruit of the spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, etc. And in many ways, a man should exemplify the fruit of the spirit. Uh, a man should be, be able to be defined um, when you bring up Ricardo, when you bring up Mark, you should be able to say things like, that's a loving man. That's a man that exemplifies joy. That's a man that expresses kindness. That's a man who, who's developed the art of patience. Mm -hmm. These are not attributes that you associate with a boy. More likely, it's the opposite. They're, they're selfish. They think only of themselves. They are not patient. They tend to be more rough than gentle. They don't know how to uh, modulate their emotions. Whatever they're feeling, it's just what you're going to get. Yeah. They, there's no filter. There's no buffer. Um, they don't know how to take instruction. These are things you associate with a boy than you do with a man. And unfortunately, in our world today, far too many uh, men, uh, or I should say males for our conversation, um, don't exemplify the characteristics of manhood. And this is obviously easier said than done, as we may talk about later on, but 
when we're talking about what a man is, for me, it starts with what are the attributes that I should look for that help me identify, is this a man fully developed, fully formed, fully matured, or is this a boy that's still in training, still in development? And it's funny, as you said that, um, is this a boy that shaves? I thought that was kind of interesting. In, in my head, I don't know why, it just flashed um, before my eyes. You know, a grown man playing PlayStation, you know, <laughs> does that mean he's not a man? Or a grown man that, you know, he's still playing sports or he's still competitive like a child, does that mean he's not a man or whatever else? But um, definitely, it's a great question. I mean, I think, you know, let's make a distinction because... Yeah. And I, and I like how Alex broke that down because in a lot of ways when we talk about what is a man, we're talking about somebody who is a mature male. Yeah. Right? And maybe not just in stature, right? But also <clears throat> but also in character mm. and also in priorities in terms of his responsibility. And we'll obviously get to what does it mean to be a man of God. Yeah. But I think it's important for us to make the distinction that just because a man is like uh, an older person, it doesn't mean that he, like, he stops having fun. Right, right. It doesn't mean he doesn't have hobbies. So he can play video yeah. games. I, there's nothing, okay, well, let's be clear. He can play like, Monopoly. I'm not expecting, <laughs> well, I like Monopoly, so don't say anything about Monopoly because I play Monopoly. But in all seriousness, I, I don't see anything wrong with a man having a hobby. And if his hobby is occasionally, you know, getting in front of the TV, watching a movie or playing a video game. But it's, but it's different when it's like, okay, he's skipping church. He's not going to work. He's like, you know what I mean? He's like every opportunity he gets, he's not paying his bills, but he can find time to play Call of Duty. Like, obviously, that's, <laughs> not, that's not like maturity, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I just wanted to jump in and say it because I think sometimes, and, and, I, and I'm being honest, like even, you know, I want to be, you know, as transparent myself. Sometimes I even have to ask myself, like, what do I like to do? Because sometimes I get so engrossed in man responsibilities. Like I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a, min a lay minister at my local church. So it's like I have a lot of like responsibilities. I'm doing stuff, but it's like, what do I also like to do right. so that I can also enjoy being a man right. and a man of God? Right. Right. But um, maybe like just to be clear we're not necessarily trying to splice the two because we, you know, obviously as believers, we want to speak about what it means to be a man in the context of being a man of God, of course. But at the same time, you know, for anybody listening, it's important for us to know that we want to encourage men to be men. We want to encourage men to be responsible and faithful, and etc. But don't stop being who God has called you to be. And don't, and certainly don't stop living your life in the name of responsibility. Like that's right. one thing that I'm personally wrestling with. All right. Because it's like you get so engrossed in responsibility. Sometimes you find identity in just doing stuff. And it's like, okay, but like, who am I? Like, what do I like to do? Right. Outside of responsibility. Right, right. I hope I didn't derail the talk fast. <laughs> no, no, no. I love it. I love it. And I think that's, that's, that's where we yeah. should be. Because I think of my sons. I have two sons. And I asked myself, I was challenged with that question. What's the difference between me and them? One is eight, one is four. And the only answer I could give was responsibility. The only answer. We have the same parts. We have the same hair. We have the same structure, I think, you know, bone structure. I think he's, Alex is a doctor here, so yeah. he must know. I have to be careful. By anytime default, I, give, Alex anytime I give any analogies <laughs> towards the body, I'm making sure that, you know, I, I do my Google search before I say anything. No, we're not <laughs> even Googling. We're just going to defer to Alex. But, but, yeah. <laughs> but at the point, I mean, the point I'm making is that um, my sons, there's no difference between me and them. The only core difference is that I have responsibility. And I think of like maybe 30, 40 years ago, that's what a man was. A man was somebody who, when things went wrong, they figured it out. That was my idea of a man. My idea of a man was when the family's in trouble, um, I would picture the man coming to the rescue. I picture the man as the superhero of the home. That's just the way I, I understood manhood, that he was the responsible Adult, not to say my mother was not the responsible adult, but he was, looking. yeah, he was the responsible, accountable one. And, and sort of my question is, you know, how has that changed from the last 20 or 30 years? Um, 
do children or does the household still look at that man as a superhero, so to speak, or the one who holds everything together? Do we still have that, you know, that thinking of a man or has the definition of a man changed? And then maybe we can transition to what it is to be a man of God. But I, I just want to throw it out there. I mean, is that the same model? Um, 20 or 30 years ago, are we still looking to a man to be that strong, dominating, being able to, to, to ration their emotions, being able to hold things together when things get bad? Is that definition sort of change? Is that barbaric? Or is that still relevant? Is there some merit to it? Should we understand it differently? I think the, the way to sometimes to think through these things, you want to take it to its logical end and see if it still holds true. So if we say the reverse, and you said one of the core things you think about in a fully matured man is someone who's able to hold responsibility, right? Um, but if you take that away from a man, mm. then what would be the natural outcome of that? So, and perhaps you would see in many spheres of life. So what do I mean by that? So if you take responsibility out of education, there's no drive to build up yourself more. Mm. We talked about this actually recently in one of our men's meeting, actually, it, the, the ability to improve yourself and not just in formal education, getting, you know, degrees and whatnot, even though that's one form of education, yeah. but even informal education. You know, you may not be someone who uses their hands, but if you own a home or you're renting a place, you want to be able to maintain it, yeah. right? right. Um, can you do some small things with your car? You may not be a mechanic be able to build a car from scratch, but yeah. can you yeah. change your tires, yeah. right? If your tire goes out on the road, can you safely put on uh, the spare tire and get your, your family home yeah. and then let the expert take it from there, <laughs> right? Can you hang a picture in your home? Hang up, uh, I you mean, go. I struggle with that. Right? So... These are the things that we're talking about here, but even more so, um, you take this to business. And one of the things we struggle with, particularly, um, unfortunately, in the black community, is that uh, we struggle with getting business off the ground. And perhaps one of the, one of the, and I'm not saying this is the, the, the key issue, but I'm just using it as an example. One of the issues we have with getting businesses off the ground and then maintaining a successful business mm. is responsibility, right? Because yeah. you have to be a manager. Right. Yeah. You have to know things that's going on in your business. Right. Be accountable when things go wrong in the business. Yeah. You step up to the plate and figure yeah. it out. That's right. right. That's right. And if you don't, you find someone to help you figure it out. Right. But far too often we don't. And that's I'm not saying that's the key re reason. I want to be clear, but that's part of the issue. Why often we struggle uh, in politics when there's no responsibility, yeah. then you default to someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And now your policies are being made by other people yeah. instead of you critically thinking about how that policy not only affects your uh, direct uh, voters, right. but affects generations right. down the road, right. right? There's a certain weight of responsibility when you put in a leadership role. Yeah. So when you take away the responsibility out of a man, right? And again, this, for our discussion, we talk about men, not that women are lack yeah. responsibility, as Correct. you said, but again, that's just the topic we're on right now. Um, when you take responsibility and take a man as absent of responsibility, there is no scenario in which that ends well. Yeah. Wow. So we can't say that a fully developed man lacks responsibility. In fact, we challenge ourselves when we look to a man and we say part of why we look to someone and say, oh, man, that's a person who's walking in their full manhood. We look at the responsibilities that they carry. Right. We see that if we can't trust. Them. In fact, I would argue it's hard to trust a man who has no responsibilities. Wow. But we more are so trusting a person who has responsibilities. We look to the, the and, uh, this is a, uh, the parable, the talents, uh, with the servants of the talents, right? I often wonder why at the end of the story where the master had given three servants, five, two, and one talents respectively. He comes back and the guy who had five doubled it. And the guy who had two, he doubled it. But the guy who had one kind of buried in the ground and did He's nothing scared with it, and, right? Yeah. He had the least amount of responsibility. And yet he did the worst with it. And you would think the guy who has the five talents, he would feel the pressure, right? If anything, he should marry because at least, you know, even if they double theirs, he still got more than what they had. But because of the, the, sometimes the weight of responsibility is the testing point to determine, is this guy a real man or is this guy going to cower in fear? 
right? A real man is going to step up to the plate and have courage because courage is only found in the face of fear, right? It's hard to be courageous when there's nothing to be scared that's of. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Right? That's right. But when there's something to be scared of, yeah. but man still steps up, knowing that failure is an option, it yes. could occur, but yes. he's going to stand up anyway to face that. the test. This is the man we now look to, even if he failed, and go, well, you know what? He stood up to the plate. That's the guy who's going to have my back. That's the guy who's going to try. That's the guy who's going to stay, be the last man standing. This is the, and to, to answer your question, I think when you push it to its logical end, uh, it's hard to find a person you can trust. It's fine, hard to find a person of integrity. And it's hard to find a person that's going to have the courageousness. And when you lack those things, I mean, you're really stripping uh, what, left, what is left of this man, yeah, yeah. right? It's a boy. So, yeah, so, and again, like you said with your sons, they don't necessarily have to have that yet, no. right? The, you're I'm, doing everything for them, I'm doing. right? You, it's all on you, right? They're, they don't go around wondering, oh, am I going to get fed tonight? They're just like, dad, feed us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to figure it out where they're going to get fed, yeah. right? So uh, I think responsibility is key, but not to just stop there, but to really push it to its end and realize, oh, well, you know what? Like, it, you, a man devoid of responsibility perhaps isn't a man at all. Wow. Okay, and I love that piece about fear because a lot of the time when we speak about men or perhaps even us as men, we pretend like we don't have fears. Yeah. We pretend like we're not scared. We pretend like you know, we don't feel the weight of our responsibilities and sometimes that weight feels you know, unbearable, yeah. but we do feel it and, and that's what courage is. Go Absolutely, ahead. I, I think, the, you know, Sometimes I almost think it's not fair being a man because it's like <laughs> you, there's so much expectation and I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's just a reality, right? Like there's just a lot of expectation placed on a man, you know, as a husband, as a father, as a, as a minister in the church. You know, there's a lot of things that are on us, right? Yeah. And I think sometimes it's like we have to deliver primarily because we are responsible for others. Right. Right. And that principle applies not only in the context of being a husband, like with a family, but even like at work, right? Like as a leader, like I have people who report to me and they're counting on me to be in the position and to operate in the position so that when they need something, I'm not like, well, I don't know, right? right? Like they're looking. So it's the same way like I apply that principle as a man um, that God has entrusted people to me or responsibilities to me, um, but the reality is my responsibility is to ensure that I'm operating and I'm also doing what I need to do because there's people counting on me. So the reason why I said it sometimes doesn't feel like it's fair is because, you know, there's people counting on me, but I'm like, okay, but what if I'm not in the place or what if I'm struggling with stuff? Sometimes, it, you know, it, I feel like society puts a lot of pressure on men to be like, figure it out. But like, if you have problems, figure it out. Right? right but you know like women they have like support groups they call one another they do all this stuff to support one another but if you're a man it's like you figure it out nobody yeah. wants to see a man cry yeah they say they you know they, they say like oh yeah like yeah oh, it's, it's okay. okay it's okay it's not okay <laughs> it's not okay they don't mean that women don't want to see men cry and it's almost like it's considered weakness yeah. people don't want to see men afraid of stuff even True. though it's like but i'm a person too yeah, yeah. right so that's why I sometimes joke like, you know, like we, we talk a lot about like the responsibility aspect and, you know, we need men to be this, we need men to be that. But it's like men are also people, too. We have fears, we have weaknesses, we have challenges. And I think one thing that we as a community, as a faith based community, especially, but as a community, um, one thing that we should do for one another is create safe spaces for men to connect when they do have fears or when they do have challenges. Because I don't know about you, brothers, but I know whenever I've been in a place where I'm like, I don't know what to do and I don't know who to turn to, that causes, like, anxiety. Yeah. That yeah. causes stress. That causes me to even start to question things. And obviously, this is why I think it's important for us to remember that we're also a faith-based community where we believe not only in the God of the Bible, but we also believe in the things that the scriptures teach, which is... Like, for example, like we should confess our sins one to another, right? We should right. encourage one another while it is yet still today, right? Because the day is approaching. Like, there's so many scriptures I could quote, but I think it's important for us to realize that God doesn't want men to be alone in their fears or in their struggles. 
he wants men to be empowered. He wants men to be responsible. Mm. He wants men to be like, get it done. Because yeah. I've entrusted you with people or things. Yeah. But at the same time, like you're not alone. Right, right. And I think that's really right. important to state, especially yes. in today's culture, because in a lot of ways, when you talk to men, just in general, I find it's, when you talk to a lot of men, it's kind of like they're just doing things to get things done. But mm. it's not like, is this the best way to go about it? Is it the right way to go about it? Are you succeeding at what you're doing? Like, it's almost like it doesn't matter as long as it gets done. Right, right, right. It, so, you know, you talked about like putting up a picture in your house. It's like, like maybe you're struggling with it, but it's like, and you put it on the wall, but it's still leaning. And your wife's been complaining about it. But it's like, but I did something. Yeah. Like, you should be thankful I did something. But it's like, no, but that's not like, so you see, so I, maybe the last thing I would just say is, I think with, with being a man, at least where responsibility and expectations go, I think there is this implicit understanding that we will just figure it out and get it done. And you can trust that if I'm on the job, yeah, it, it I'll will. figure it out. I will get it done. And even if it's not me physically, I will get connected to the right person who can help me get it done. But I think part of being a man is ensuring that you position yourself either through education or association or whatever, but, it, but getting yourself connected to be considered a responsible, to be considered an accountable and a per uh, an accountable person and one who like can be trusted right because right. like i said part of being a man is or sorry i think the expectations that are placed on a man inclusive of you know even the bible speaks about it. i was just reading in first timothy 5 like the bible even says like if he doesn't provide for his own he's worse than an unbeliever yeah yeah like what <laughs> like even god's like get it done get a man. job yeah get a job get it <laughs> I have, a jo- I have a joke about that, but that's for another day. But um, the reality is, like, even God has expectations for us. And if and the one thing I know about God is if it's something that he's called you and I to do, he will help us. He doesn't call us to just figure it out. He's there to help us along the way. So, you know, my encouragement to any brother who's listening is really like, no, man, like, you're not alone in this. We're all trying to figure this thing out, but God is available and he's accessible to all of us and we will have fears we will have challenges weaknesses things that we're dealing with that might hinder our ability to properly walk this man thing out but that's okay because we're all at different places i don't think there's a like i don't pastor Martin, like i don't think at the end of my journey like there's gonna be like a man award right <laughs> like i i think what i'm mostly concerned with is like okay i'm making it into the kingdom right yeah, yeah. but like at the same time I don't think it's like my my duty to figure every single man duty out because there's things that I'm not good at and there's things that I am good at and vice versa, I'm sure, for everybody here. But if we could sharpen one another or at least help one another, it's like that's just as okay as me figuring it out. But, hey, let me be honest. Like, I think there's some things that I'm like, I probably should have called someone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? I should have yeah. probably called someone. It probably would have helped me and saved me a lot of money and time if I had maybe just asked somebody who actually specializes in this. But then there's also opportunities for my own personal learning as a man. So, you know, I'm going back to your simple example about, you know, putting something up on the wall. Like, some people might look at it as like, well, like, why is it leaning? But for the man, it's like, but I did something. I tried. I yeah. tried. Yeah. And it didn't come out the way I thought it would come out. And my wife's making comments, and she may not fully understand, like, how much it might mean to me to yeah. just see that I did something, but I did something. That's true. I got to fix it, though. That's cause true. Because she, she's, <laughs> she's, like, she's, you know, I got to fix it. And if I can't fix it, I'm going to call someone. But at the end of the day, I did something. And I think that can both be acknowledged and celebrated, but it shouldn't be the last place a man ends. I think a man should see something through. Right. To the so, end. Yeah. <clears throat> so I want to read a passage. And then I'm going to make a comment because it's it sort of ties off of what you're saying. So 1 Corinthians 11, uh, verse 7 and 8, it says, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God. Now, we're not talking about head covering right now. It's the latter part of that verse that says, For he is in the image and glory of God, and but the woman is in the glory of a man. Now, in my view, I view that uh, a man is like an eagle, sometimes among chickens. 
I actually think we have that identity. I think we have that built-in power, just like the eagle. He might see chickens doing certain things and he might behave as a chicken, but someday his, his wings sort of get strong and he starts to flap and he starts to behave like an eagle. I think a man actually has everything that he needs to succeed and to bear the uh, expectations of society. I actually believe that. I believe that man was made to be that superhero. I believe that man was made to bear the brunt of the responsibilities of his family, um, of the workforce, and even the world. I think he was made. My personal conviction is a man was made with the ability to do that. And so um, I heard in a marriage seminar, um, one doctor, our own Dr. Duff, he was mentioning that you'll notice in little boys, when a little boy is building something, and his mom calls him, calls him away and says, come for dinner, and he doesn't want to stop building. There's something intrinsic inside of him that he, he needs to accomplish this. Um, it's a must. And so you pull that boy away from building that Lego set, and he starts bawling his eyes out because you disengaged him from something that he knew he could do. That's the reason why he's bawling his eyes out. Or perhaps even the, the, the opposite, where he can't build it and he's freaking out because he can't build it. Why is he freaking out? Because he, he knows that something inside of him says that he can build it. But he's frustrated because he's, it's not working. So um, society puts certain expectations on us. And maybe we can even talk about our wives. Our wives. Where does, where does our wives get this idea that a man of God transitioning a man transitioning to from a <laughs> from a just man to man of god not transitioning in any other way <laughs> but um why does why does our wives hold us to this high standard why does our wives um expect us is that just maybe society has taught um our our women to view the man to be able to do everything is that just nurture or is that innate um, does man really have the ability to bear all the expectations that society puts on him, his family puts on him, his children put on him, and the word of God? Can he really do that? Is he really the eagle, you know, among chickens? Or does he have to sort of, you know, morph and transform into this new being and gain all of these skills? I, th I personally believe that that's actually in a man. That's actually in a man. Strength is in a man. Being able to manage his emotions and make decisive decisions, I believe that that's innate. I believe it's in a man. The same way a man has a physical structure that differs from a woman, I believe that um, the makeup of a man, the inner being of a man is different than the inner being of a woman. She might have a more nurturing side, but I think that we are built. Our shoulders are, you know, I guess... Um, spiritually built to bear the brunt of society, to bear the brunt of the world. Adam was made and he was given dominion over the world. And I don't think God gives anyone um, any task that he's not able to fulfill or he doesn't equip them with. So I think a man has that, I think the word is potential. That potential is built into a man that differs from a woman. And that's why that, that natural expectation of our wives, of our children, to see, you know, the man as Superman, um, I think it just comes natural. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I guess in order to... Tr I, I'm not entirely sure if I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Because you, use, you, mix, <laughs> you, you mix two things. Yeah. Nature and potential. Mm, mm. Those aren't the same things to me. Yes. Those are very different things. Okay. So is it nurture or is it an innate nature of uh, the man? So right? if, you, if you think of an eagle, an eagle's wings will grow to a certain length. Um, an eagle has a natural nature to be a different type of bird than a chicken. But if the eagle is amongst chicken, he might behave like a chicken. But I still think one day he spreads his wings. Who's the, ch what, who's the chicken in this analogy? That's a good point. The chicken, the chicken is the person who doesn't know God. The chicken is the person who um, doesn't know who his true potential is. So 
another question then. Yes. Are you arguing that you can't be a man then? Yes. <laughs> I think we're trying to do the transition to the alpha to work. So <laughs> something in manhood that is missing, void of God then? Yes. So what is that thing then? Because one could argue that there are plenty of very good men who carry responsibility, that have integrity, mm. that display excellent character. They yeah. go to work, that they take care of their families, they make sure the finances are in order, they get help when they need it, uh, among other things. I would look at that person and say, this is a very well-developed man, right? That's true. But you would say that they're not quite reaching the top of their potential, which I think would be a better word yeah. than na their, their nature. Because certainly there's obviously genetic and anatomical differences that allow men to do certain things that most women could not do, yeah. right? Um, but in this, from what I'm hearing you say is, in order for the man to actually reach their full potential, there's a certain process that they have to go through, Correct. right? Much like how I'm, uh, physically a boy becomes a man uh, through puberty, right? There's an actual process that occurs through various fluctuations of hormones and things like that. So for, for you, and going back to this eagle chicken and, uh, analogy here, what is the missing ingredient then that if we're talking to someone who is not a believer, but in the other way they've developed into a man, we would look at that person and say, that's a responsible man. Mm -hmm. What are they missing? I think I'd say identity. I think identity. Um, <clears throat> the person who is not a believer, the person who doesn't know God, um, I think they're doing these things based on, you know, some of it is sort of by nature or perhaps what he has seen. I do believe every man, let me just clarify that, I do believe every man has this ability to bear responsibility. So I, I do believe that. So maybe the chicken and eagle analogy is not a perfect analogy, but, you know, take it for what it is. But um, every man has the ability to bear responsibility. But I believe when a man finds himself in God and Christ, I think his identity takes it further. It, it, it fuels into the integrity that he does it with. So his identity, he identifies with, well, I'm not just a responsible man. I'm not just taking my responsibility because that's what I've seen others do. My responsibility is connected to the one who gave me the responsibility. Um, my responsibility is connected to, I must be like my father. 